Hey, welcome to Flying Wheels and Flipping Cars 101. Today is a really, really fun video. If you've been following along, you know that I'm racing across America in a 2021 Porsche Taycan. That's not what this video is about. You guys like to flip stuff. I've heard it over and over. Craig, get back to the flip stuff. Get back to the flip stuff. That's what this video is about. That car I bought as a flip, not just to race in a car show, which has been really, really fun. I'm bringing that car to LA to sell in LA, hopefully for a profit. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Craig from Flying Wheels. I own a small car dealership. I love to educate you on all my mistakes, so hopefully you don't make them as well. Also, I do well sometimes. So I'd like to share that with you guys as well. I bought this 2021 Porsche Taycan in New Jersey. Brought it back to my house in New Hampshire. I'm driving across the country to see if I can make a profit on it. How do you make a profit on a brand new car? I don't know, we're gonna find out. Come join me in the fun. Let's get it. Again, my name is Craig from Flying Wheels, coming at you from Flagstaff, Arizona. I started this journey in New Hampshire. Drove down to New Jersey to pick up that 2021 Porsche Taycan. I then drove it from New Hampshire down to New York City to race it across the country in the first ever all-electric vehicle cannonball run. No Teslas allowed. They have their own infrastructure. You can have any car you want that is not a Tesla. I said, can I have a Taycan? Can I buy myself a Taycan so I can race it across the country? And I'm gonna tell you what, it's absolutely comfortable. My mother is my racing partner. That right there is me madre, Senora Stoll. She's a Spanish teacher, that's why I said that. So she is my racing partner. We are nine days into the race. This car, crazy comfortable. Now we have our cameraman, Max. We have a new cameraman every single day. We have a camera hook up here as well. It's been a really great time. The only problem, this was a brand new car when I bought it and now there are gonna be some bumps and bruises. I say brand new car, let me strike that, reverse it. I bought it as a Porsche demo, so it already had 8,000 miles on it. So brand new, kind of yes, kind of no. I bought it with 8,000 miles, so it should have already suffered a little bit of depreciation because I didn't pay MSRP. I actually paid $78,000, I think. We'll go over the numbers a little later. I think I paid $78,000 for it. I'm thinking I should be able to get $88,000 once I get to LA. So it's gonna be really, really cool to see if I break even, if I lose. It's gonna have like another 4,000 miles on it when I'm done. <laughs> All right, let me interrupt this video real quick because I want to break down in a little bit more detail what my intentions are doing, what I'm planning on doing. So I own a dealership. You can see all these cars here. I am going to wholesale this Porsche Taycan to another dealer. So I bought it from a Porsche dealer in New Jersey. I own a dealership and I'm going to wholesale it to another dealer. Now, because I'm a licensed dealer, I don't have to transfer the title into my name. I can just reassign it on the back and then sign it over to the next dealer. So I don't have to pay the taxes on it. I don't have to register it. I don't have to title it. It's super, super easy. So I would much prefer wholesaling cars as to selling retail. Now, when we sell retail, we sell to the public. It's a lot more work. There's phone calls, there's marketing, there's handshakes, there's financing it's a lot of work but there's more profit in it I'd much prefer wholesale because I can just literally pass it off to the next dealer and I'll let them make a few bucks on it as well so that's what wholesaling is and that's my intentions in this Taycan now if you're interested in doing this I have created this entire program that will walk you by the hand like literally step by step and show you how to not just get your dealer license because you can google that not just how to get your dealer's license but how to set up your own business how to find your location how to start a real dealership whether you want to sell wholesale or retail it's really really cool really in depth i mean i hope i make 10 grand on this porsche and that would make my month just on that one car. Now imagine if you can just keep doing that over and over. Also, also, because you guys asked for it, we reduced the price, but for a limited time. So definitely go check it out because I'm gonna bring the prices back up. Really cool. Link down below for startyourdealership.com if you wanna learn how to do it as well. Before I get back into the video, check out my most recent project. My flip for Car Flipping 101 is that Eagle Talon right there. Now I already have one, right? Craig, what's that Eagle Talon TSI? That is an Eagle Talon TSI. That right there, is my newest one. That is a 1990 Eagle Talon that we're gonna have another video on soon. Let's get back to the Taycan. So you caught me in the midst of the race. Like I said, day nine, we're currently charging at 80%. So we're gonna get back on the road, but I wanna show you a couple things because there's a few hiccups along the way. Now this car was practically brand new. It looked like a brand new car when I picked it up. I mean, it was flawless. But one week of ownership, I parked it at a mall to charge. I went into the mall and this happened, but it was actually way worse than that. So I gave it to German. Thanks to German, he took care of most of it. German. 
I need you to the rescue. One week of ownership. I parked it at the mall last night. Mm. I moved it from the charging station so I wouldn't be an inconsiderate jerk. Parked it, and an inconsiderate jerk hit it and took off. So brand new car. I've owned it a week. This is, I'm hoping most of it is someone else's paint. Yeah. But that's deep. That's deep right there. That's deep, that's deep on a brand new car. And they took off. Can you take care of this? I'd love to see how you do it. Can I ask you what your plan of action is? Um, 1500 wet sand, lightly, just to get the paint off. And just buff it, three step. How bad is it now that you're looking at it? It's not that bad. If it wasn't for these things right here, you see? Yeah. Look at that. Red. Oh, those are so deep, too. Thank you for this. I am impressed. German doing what German does. So would you just use rubbing compound so far? Yeah. And I just have three good sized nicks deep into the plastic. Now I'm in a Walmart parking lot. I picked up some extra stuff to go try to make that look a little bit better than it is. Well, we're at 81%. It's time to get going, and I'm gonna keep working on this car. I'm gonna clean that up, and we're gonna see if we can make some profit in LA. So we're at charging station number two in Arizona, like just outside of Las Vegas. So when I was at Walmart in the last parking place, in the last charging station, I got some cleaner wax. I got some scratch X. I got some uh, 1500 get wet sandpaper. And I got just a little bit of glue so I can maybe fill this gap in right here. That's pretty gnarly. So I have some 1500 grit sandpaper right here. I'm just going to sand these smooth in these three spots. And now you can see that it's sanded smooth here and here, which actually made kind of a dull finish. I'm going to take the scratch X and see how this works on it. I want something clear. I don't want to use any Bondo or anything because I don't want to paint this front bumper. So I'm going to take some super glue and I'm going to use a little bit of this cardboard and I'm just going to try to fill in those gaps to smooth this out. So this right here, if you look closely, should fill it in and then I can sand it again. The other thing that happened too, which is kind of bumming me out, is one of the cameramen moved my car and nicked my wheel right there. Just a little bit of a scuff. So I'm wondering if a little bit of super glue brings that color back, or do I have to sand that out too? I might have to sand that completely. That didn't do anything, what a bummer. Now I've been washing the car throughout the trip, even though it's a race, I've been stopping at car washes, because the bug damage is a scratch right there, damn it. Ugh. The bugs, I don't want much bug damage on my car that's gonna last. I don't want the guts to heat up and then like used in my paint. So I've been washing the cars we go to. Let's try some of the scratch X on that scratch in the rim right there. But it's still there, one and two. But it's definitely better. Now the other problem with driving this car across the country and then selling it is we're literally doing that. We're driving this across the country, so we're adding about 4,000 miles and road damage. I mean, look at it. There's a bee, some bug guts, all these bugs here, and this is after a bunch of car washes. All those bugs, bug damage. But also, I gotta hope that, like it felt like it got peppered across my windshield a few times from some tractor trailers just sand on the road. And then we've been driving it, so you know, wear and tear, like there's some schmutz that got stuck in my seat right there. I put these down to protect the original factory carpets because I want this car to look like a brand new car when I go sell it. And you just see we have stuff everywhere. The car is filled up because we're taking a road trip. There's one other thing that's been really bugging me about it. Here you can see the, the uh, footprints all over, which I think will wa we'll wash out. But the gaff tape holding the speakers and the microphones and the cameras and everything on are all over the car. So I have to hope that this gaff tape doesn't leave debris. And then right here, I don't know what happened right here. I don't know if that'll come out or what, but it's definitely a blemish and it sticks out to me. And those spots 
are on that door sill as well. And the other thing, I mean, it's good that we're waiting to get our charge up, but the other thing that's good is there's an AutoZone right here, and they have like those duplicolor touch-up pens, so I'm gonna try to find a silver that's really, really close to that car so I can touch it up so it's not just a big black blemish in the bumper. Here we go, all of these. So if I could find like a Volkswagen silver, because I'm sure they don't have it for Porsche, but it's like a silver blue, so it's a little tough. I like silver metallics with Fords, Ford, GM, GM, Toyota, Nissan, Kia, Honda, and then Universals. I got Nissan Platinum Silver, because obviously they don't have a Porsche color, so I just have to hope it's close. And no matter what, it's gonna look better than a big black mark in my bumper. So now that we're at the next charging station, I have some time. So you can see I've actually filled those. So now they're flat and I can wet sand them. So once it dries, I can wet sand them. And then I'm gonna try to touch it up and then I'm gonna polish the whole thing. Cause you can see there's still some scuffs from when German uh, polished it. So I'm gonna try to wet sand the whole thing and see if we can get that back to normal. And then this spot and the headliner, I'm gonna try to clean up myself too. Good news is I don't know what was on this headliner before, but all I did was take some water to it and a rag and all of it came off. That is such a relief because I thought it was like tears or wear in the headliner and now there's nothing that is so great and then there's a couple plans that i made in advance because mom what you plan ahead what was your saying fail to plan plan to fail fail to plan plan to fail wait what plan to fail fail, fail to plan plan to fail there you go so i planned ahead i called many dealerships that are out there now i know my fallback my worst case scenario i can leave this car at a Mannheim auto auction. They'll take it, it's stored. No one can leave with it, they can't steal it. That's my last case scenario. My first case scenario, my best case, I work with ACV auctions all the time. I sell a ton of cars with ACV auctions. If you're a dealer, you should definitely look them up. I probably have a promo code that I'll put down in the description if I can for $350 or your first time buy credit, but it'll be in the description down below. So definitely check out ACV auctions. This car, they're, I think I'm gonna list on there and I've called them. My rep in New Hampshire called the rep out in LA. Also, Charge Across America works with ACV. ACV is a sponsor for the race. So they're gonna do all kinds of media and publication on the car, tell the story about the car, tell the story about the race. So they're actually gonna build this car up, which is really, really cool. So that is like best case scenario. The car has an awesome story behind it. It's the first of its kind to ever do this. No one has literally ever done this before and it's gonna be televised. So that car is really important. It's really, really cool for whoever's buying it. it kind of makes me wish I was keeping it, but it's, everything's gotta go. I can't keep everything. I'm not a collector. So that car's all set up. The dash is clean. Now everyone's leaving Tuesday. I'm actually staying an extra day. So Wednesday is my day to like go through this car, clean it up early in the morning. I'll clean the whole car. That way it's ready for photographs Wednesday at some point. And then I'm gonna have to leave it in LA while I go home. Kind of neat actually these duplicolor pens come with the color and then a clear coat so I can paint it on one side and then the bottom side is actually clear coat. Now let's see how close I actually got to the color. That's a little off. That is a little off. I wonder if I can blend it. That's pretty good. All right, now that the super glue is dry, let's see if I can wet sand it out. All right, and now that it's sanded smooth, let's see if I can touch it up. Obviously that's really noticeable, so I'm just gonna try to blend it. And I'll do it several times. They look so much better already though. Now I'm just gonna let that dry. Check this out. My car is on the track at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. We have the ID4, the other Taycan, the Mach E, the Audi. This is cool. Do a smirk, I, like you want to win, you know? Don't, don't be like, yeah. yeah, don't be like, yeah, you I'm look just like here for fun. Right now. Like, I'm here to fuck some shit up. There you That's go. what we need. How cool is this? So I'm at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, and this is the selection of cars you get to choose from when racing on the track. We got a Lambo, a C8, 
Another Lambo. Oh cool, you can try a Supra out. We have a GTR, two Ferraris, take your pick. And then choose between your Porsches. So check this, Las Vegas Motor Speedway. I am on turn one right now. This is how steep turn one is. I'm walking up here. It's actually so much work. Like I am, I can feel it in my calves. That's how steep turn one is. Ready from the top. Jeez, actually I'm getting a workout doing this. This is crazy. I'm on the top of a hill. That's how steep it is. It's wild. So you can see we have the cars all lined up. We actually have Channel 7 News for Las Vegas here interviewing us, going through the race and how everything has worked. My car, I think, is already sold as well. So I think I already have it sold at 86.5, which is really, really cool. That's actually a profit on this car, and I got to enjoy it. The future of transportation has shown why our state might be the key to the electronic vehicle revolution. Look behind me. I am at Las Vegas Motor Speedway with the Porsche Taycan and no one around and I asked if I could do a hot lap they said no I'll get kicked off the show if they sneak a hot lap in and I'm still tempted enough to do a hot lap and scare the SHI out of my mom I will never have this opportunity ever again do I do it I can't do it but I really I want to take a lap around that course in my car. We've officially made it to LA day 10. Stay day 10, Neil. Yeah. There it is. Official, we have made it to LA. Look at these houses. I know, right? Right on the PCH on the beach, imagine that. This is really funny. Look at all of these old campers and vans and an, a legit camper. All these people are parked on the side of the Pacific Coast Highway living in their vans down by the ocean. Malibu Sport Fishing Pier. Pretty neat. I think that is the Taycan wagon. So that's my version. That's my car in a wagon version. Tesla, 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 and it kind of gets me excited because I've seen multiple Taycons here and I've never seen one in the Northeast. So obviously they're in higher demand out here, which makes it worth miles. more money. Look at this car dealership. There's a Lamborghini dealership with a Bentley dealership and a Gen Genesis and a Hyundai dealership all in one. That is wild. I'm not going to tell you what place we are, but everybody's setting us up. This is the behind the scenes. See the camera guy over there? We have the chase car behind us right there. Camera guy. So they have us waiting. It's pretty Come neat. On. Guess what? The race is over. How to replace? You gotta watch to find out. I can't tell you that, but I can tell you. We're here. Here's my car, and check this place out. We're at Westlake Autoscapes, and this is their collection: GT2 RS, a GT350. Which one is that? Scagliatelli. Which Ferrari is this one? That's a beautiful car. I don't even know. Wow. Very similar to the uh, T-Bird that I just gave my grandfather. And then we have a Mustang and a Camaro over there. This place is so cool and I'm just happy that it's over with. Now even better than this, I have ACV Auctions coming to appraise my car tonight. So I work closely with ACV Auctions, if you know. Well, they're a sponsor of this show. So I'm working with them twice through the show and through selling my car. So they're gonna come here, appraise it, and some of the calls I've had so far this week, because I've been lining them up all week, I think I'm at like $86,000. But they haven't seen the damage to the bumper. I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. I have to show them, obviously they'll see it. And uh, ACV will appraise it and they'll mark for that. So I don't know if I'm gonna get the 86, but if I do, that's like eight grand. So we had fun. The race was paid for. I can't tell you how we did. And I might make some money on that car. And check out what I found way over there. I'm pretty sure that's OJ Simpson's Bronco.
And we're in California, so there's probably no rust on that Bronco. Let's go check that out real quick. And a Ford Harley Lightning. Aren't those supercharged? I'm pretty sure that is a supercharged 5.4 crew cab Harley F-150. That's a, a actually a really comfortable, fast truck. This is a really clean Bronco. Oh my goodness, look at that frame, California car. Look at the frame and undercarriage of California cars. The chrome, the chrome is still chrome. That is not what it's like in New Hampshire. I have never seen a Bronco like, I, I haven't seen a Bronco like, oh my goodness, look at that leather. This truck is beautiful. I haven't seen a Bronco this clean since 1996. Wow, that is so sharp. Look at the headlights, how clean those headlights are. They're not uh, foggy or faded. Oh my goodness, these are solid. These are solid. These are always so rusty and bubbly where I'm from. I can't believe I appreciate the Bronco more than all those other cars I just showed you in the garage. So here's the producer's car. This is actually rented on Turo from Ryan Levinson, if you saw that other video. Uh, the guy that raced across the country in Cannonball running a Tesla, that was the car. This is our Chase van, all the production and camera film crew is in, all in here. And then you can see the Chase vehicle, that Tahoe was the one following us, taking all the hero shots earlier today. Now check out these Jeeps. They must obviously do Jeeps here too. Wow. Whoa, geez. Wow. Yes. Two for one. Two for one? Two for one. You get two of those for your one. Are they, are they all for sale? Everything's for sale. Nice collection. Oh, a 392 Rubicon. I actually haven't seen these in person yet. This is a Hemi 392 cubic inch Rubicon that just came out. I actually haven't seen one of these in person yet. I want to drive it. Funny, brand, brand new Jeep Wrangler. First thing they do is wheels and tires. Great news. So ACV auction is here already. They showed up. They are listing my car for me. So I'm in LA. Everything's gold. The car's ready for them. They have their own rep. This is Alex right here. He shows up. He does a whole inspection for me. I'm going to list it on ACB tonight. They'll sell it. I send the title to them. They overnight me a check or a lot of times they'll do like a direct deposit ACH into my business account. Super easy. So these guys have made this whole process a lot easier for me. Alex from ACB did the full appraisal, the inspection, went through the whole car for me. Now I just have to, it uploads to my phone. I hit launch, bing, bang, boom, 20 minutes later, 20 minutes, that's car it should, should be sold. Should 50, be 100 sold. people are looking at it looking at it at the same time. Live. That's incredible. They're that's awesome. for the car and hopefully it sells. It's like a weight is lifted off my head. And because of these guys, it just made it so easy. So pretty easy. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for the Appreciate opportunity. It. Thank, you, Thank so you. Thank you, ACV. And finish. So it's official. The auction is live. It's been live for 15 minutes. So this whole experience, whether I made money or not, was invaluable. It was priceless. I got to spend time with my mom. I got to drive a car that I love. I got to do what I enjoy being on the show. And then, ready for it? Hey there, thanks again for watching. Make sure to stay tuned and subscribe to see if we really sold this car. If so, for how much or did we lose money? That'll be our next episode. Thanks for watching always. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.